I would like to discuss with you uh, some questions regarding dwarfism and the use of HGH. We know that uh, in children uh, whose growth curve is below the 50th percentile, some as low as the 5 to 10 percentile, we start to worry about dwarfism. When this is identified, we then look at the growth plates. These are the areas in the long bones uh, most accessible at the wrists or at the ankles where the bones are growing long. And this is where height is determined. In the true dwarfism, the growth plates are closed very, very early on. And there's no uh, uh, success with human growth hormone. Uh, the true dwarfism is DNA-driven. It's genetically driven. And it's determined by the uh, genetic code. So no matter how much uh, human growth hormone we give the patient, there's no success in getting those long bones to grow. Pseudodwarfism is a different story. It's where the growth plates are open. There's a response to human growth hormone. And we do see success. We see a very interesting and very rapid success. We can see as much as two inches in six months, which is remarkable. So the key uh, is when uh, you do find a, an infant, a child, whose who growth who's very, very low on the growth curve, uh, that is below 50th percentile, we need to start looking and asking questions about dwarfism so that we can identify uh, the cases in which human growth hormone will help. So that's uh, a very uh, uh, tight condensation of uh, dwarfism and human growth hormone. Hopefully you'll gain some uh, insight into the use of human growth hormone in dwarfism. Thank you.